Today we're talking about the best controller settings for Season 2 of Warzone 2, and we're starting with one of the most important settings, and that's the button layout. There are of course many to choose from, but I highly advise using either Tactical or Bumper Jumper Tactical. And the reason I recommend Bumper Jumper Tactical is that you can do all of the important movements in Warzone, but without moving your fingers off the triggers or analogs. Now usually you would have to play Claw, or use a Scuff controller or a controller with paddles to do this, but Bumper Jumper Tactical means we can use a standard controller and still do all of it. So as you can see on the right hand side here, it means that we mantle or jump or jump shot with the left bumper, but we go prone, slide and dive with the right stick clicked in. Because of that some of the other standard buttons are swapped around, for example melee is now B, and to throw a stun or a flash it's now A, but when you get used to this button layout you really do have a huge advantage over people that don't. Obviously these days there are no slide cancelling and bunny hopping per se, but still being able to jump around a corner on someone is going to give you an advantage. Likewise, being able to dive away from someone at any moment's notice is going to get you out of some tricky situations. If you want to take this a step further, you can enable flipped. This just flips around your bumpers and triggers. And the reason some people run this is that it means they can aim in and, most importantly, shoot a few milliseconds quicker. Just because a bumper being clicked in is slightly quicker than a trigger being clicked in. For controller vibration I turn that off but it's not too important, but now we are down to horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity. I always get asked what sensitivity people should run, and honestly it's one of those things where it's up to the individual, but generally I always say you want these on as high as you can go before you start missing shots. If you do want to train yourself to go higher though, I recommend putting it on something very high which you actually don't plan to run on, something like 18, and then you play a few games on this get used to it, and then crank it down to your target sensitivity, so say 12. That way it will feel much more natural and a lot easier than it otherwise would. Another way to make running on a higher sensitivity much easier is by reducing your ADS sensitivity multiplier. So this is how quickly your aim moves around when you're actually aimed in. I recommend having a play around with this, or if not, just running a straight 0 0.80 is very good. So ideally you want your stick sensitivities really high, so you can look around the map really quick and respond to any danger, but then when you aim in you want to hone in on a target, and by reducing your ADS sensitivity multiplier that absolutely allows that. Then we do have more options for sensitivity multipliers, and that's kind of up to you, I haven't changed any apart from the third person one, and again that's to 0 0.80. Then as we move through I've left many of these default until we get to automatic sprint. This is one of those simple settings you can change, and it essentially makes you better immediately. So by putting it on automatic tax sprint, it means when you move forward on your analog, you immediately go into a tactical sprint if it's available. Now the reason this is advantageous is that if you get shot, you can immediately run away and into cover just by flicking up on your analog, as opposed to double clicking or anything like that. And then on top of that, it just allows you to move around the map much quicker. The next important setting is the interact and reload behavior. Prioritize interact is still the best option for this, just because there is so much looting to do on Warzone. For armor plate behavior, I still have it on apply all. This is particularly better in Season 2 of Warzone 2 compared to Season 1 because we can move that little bit quicker. Then as we move on to advanced settings, obviously you want aim assist enabled, and specifically your aim assist type you want it on Black Ops. This gives you the strongest aim assist available, even though it was nerfed, it's still the strongest for me, and this is particularly the case if you put on dynamic as your aim response curve. Then we come down to some more aiming down sight settings, you want your transition timing on instant, this ensures that you aim in and out as fast as possible. Now we're on to dead zone. For minimum dead zone, you want this as low as you can go before you start to get stick drift. By having it on as low as possible, it ensures we have no input delay from us pressing a button or moving the stick in this instance to change happening on the screen. Obviously, the lower the input delay on anything, the better it is for us. But if you are getting significant stick drift and that's throwing off your aim, just put it up a little bit. Then for the triggers, 0.07 works fine for me. It's not too sensitive, but it's not too slow of an input delay. But if you like, actually put this even lower. Now as we move down to movement behaviours, there's nothing too much to change from the default, but we are going to change invert slide and dive behaviour. By putting this on inverted instead of standard, it simply means that we tap our button to dive rather than holding it. And the reason this is important is that it allows us to get in and out of cover much quicker. Then the other setting we want to change is the parachute auto deploy. Absolutely turn this 
off, I know many people do these days, but I still want to emphasize it. By turning it off, it means that we can manually pull our parachute up closer to the floor, which then in turn means we just land earlier than other players and we're ready to take people on. These are the settings you can pretty much leave on default and they're not that important, but I do recommend changing the weapon mount exit delay. The default for this is medium and you should absolutely put it on short. If you're mounted up and you started to get shot at or you need to move quickly, you obviously want it on short to get the hell out of there. And with that comes the end of this controller settings video. Hopefully it has helped you out and you can get the upper hand on your enemies. And now that you've got these settings mastered, why don't you head over here and check out the best graphics settings for consoles on Warzone 2?